Okay, good morning, guys. <coughs> Welcome to the first uh, talk of the day. Um, David Blevins is going to tell us something about Apache Tommy. Well, that was the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. He has two arms, two legs, a head, eyes, and he's going to speak right now in this room at ApacheCon. <laughs> That's fine. All right, so uh, I'm David Blevins, and first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, hope you're enjoying ApacheCon so far. How's, who's a local? Wow. All right, we have a lot of people who flew in. Great, that's cool. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm one of the creators of, uh, of Apache Tommy. We have a nice little community of, uh, of pretty passionate uh, developers. Uh, so first of all, who's an Apache committer? Yeah, awesome. Great. Um, yeah, so we created Tommy maybe a couple years ago now. Um, it's from the OpenEGB project. I ca I'm also one of the creators of Geronimo, and, and uh, I kind of like to, this, someone, quote, someone told me this quote before a presentation, and I had to stick it in. It sort of stuck uh, ever, ever, ever since. And, you know, it says, good decisions come from experience, right? Right. Bad decisions, you know, experience comes from bad decisions. And uh, that sort of summarizes what I would kind of call, say, state like my early last 10 years of like uh, Java EE approach and the way we would do things. Uh, yeah, Java EE has historically been really complicated and really hard to pierce. And uh, rather than try and tell people that they shouldn't, shouldn't want things to be simple, we're just trying to do it Java E the way the more, more majority of people would want it to be done. So let's ask some, some simpler questions. Who uses Tomcat? Okay, the entire room. Uh, who, who also uses another server like Glassfish or JWAS? And that's pretty much the exact ratio I see. This is more like 100% 50. Normally it's like 100% 30 uh, or 3 fourths. So it's like 75 to 100. And that's, that the, the reality is, is that you know, uh, a lot of times you lose the battle on when you can use Tomcat. A lot of times uh, it's more difficult to get all the things you want in it if the project requirements start needing a lot of really integrated technology like EJBs or JAXRS or certain types of things. It can become difficult to put all that stuff together yourself. And so that's effectively what we're trying to do with, with, with Tommy is basically solve the problem of why shouldn't you be able to use Tomcat 100% of the time? Why, shouldn't, why do you need to have that extra server to do those other things? Why shouldn't Tomcat be able to do all of those things? And, uh, and so basically, so Tomcat would be your choice server all the time. So first, some things that I, I find, uh, you know, especially when speaking with people uh, who may not have been Java EE fans, I, you know, I have a little section. Did you say J2EE? It's like, uh, that's what I know. It was rebranded uh, a few years ago. So, so here's the section. Some things you may have missed, you know. Um, some basic high-level milestone changes. One, we don't call it J2EE anymore. Uh, when we moved on to, you know, Java 1.4 and 1.5, it basically didn't make sense to continue calling you know, J2SE and J2EE, the J2s are gone. It's Java EE. Uh, and then also, the more significant of it is the web profile. So that's a development a lot of people seem to have missed, because at the spec level, we tend to announce the latest, coolest stuff and then stop talking about it within the, the next year. Uh, well, web profile is basically, you know how people would say Java EE is really big and bloated? Yeah, well, guess what? It kind of is. I mean, you, you can only go like 15 years adding things and never removing things before you end up with something that has quite a lot of baggage on it, right? And so therefore, to kind of acknowledge that this does happen and that this can be really kind of anti-lightweight, uh, we created the web profile, which is basically half Java EE. So Java EE cut down by like a you know 50% reduction when the web profile was created. So what the web profile allows is for you 
as a vendor or an organization like Apache to create a certified server that is much smaller in profile and size uh, than your standard very large EE server. So there are things that are not in the web profile, uh, like for example, the full profile, which is now what we used to think of as Java EE, we now call this the full profile, has about 24 specs, and the web profile is about 12. So we cut out a lot of stuff. Um, among the things that we cut out are legacy, legacy things that really are not used so much anymore. Corba is not in the web profile. Uh, CMP entity beans, not in the web profile. Uh, Jax RPC, anyone ever had to use Jax RPC? It's like the predecessor to Jax WS. Yeah, raise your hand if you've had to deal with that. Yeah, exactly. I, I, my heart goes out to all of you. I had to implement that in Geronimo, so that was really uh, you know painful. Uh, so some of these things are cut out, and uh, there are useful things not in the web profile, and as you see, we have like basically three flavors of Tommy to address various needs. Uh, another big one, ears, ear files, they're gone. We killed them, they're dead, they're, they're legacy, you don't need to do that garbage anymore. Uh, that, that whole thing uh, was just a big, 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 like I hate it when, when specs get really preachy. You know, like just because you want to add a couple extra things, now you can't put them in the war file. Suddenly you have to like put a war file, which is basically an archive that holds other archives, into another archive that is also going to have other archives. It's like how many, it's like Russian dolls. Like how many of these do we need? Yeah, so basically in EE6 we said, yeah, forget it. We were wrong. Everything can go in the war file and that's going to work. So you don't need ear files anymore. Overall. Sure, you're, you're required to support them if you're full profile, but your developer, you're not required to use them. So it's, you know, this is, and, and that's a kind of interesting point to make is when, when a lot of people look at Java EE, they, th see, re they see restrictions. Those restrictions are on us. You know what I mean? And that's a very significant difference. Um, you as an app, app developer use whatever you want. Uh, anyway, another one is that we have embeddable containers. So uh, one, one thing that OpenEJB has done for a very long time is, is running a Java SE plain Java VM. You can boot it up, plain SE, and run your test case. Goes in about a second. And we got that requirement into the spec. So basically all vendors had to make their EJB container run in a job, plain Java SE as a library. Very spring-like, right? And uh, you know, we did that basically because that has historically been the boogeyman of Java EE, like, oh, EJB is the heaviest, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, the spec is not necessarily heavy. It's a bunch of PDF text files, so it's an idea. And if you implement it badly, it's going to feel heavy. And if you implement it lightly, it's going to be very light. Uh, another one is Archelion, and I'll show you that as well. Uh, it's a testing framework that's pretty cool. And so these things combined are sort of big, big shifts. Java EE is smaller than it used to be. We ditched a bunch of legacy. It's lighter, it's tester, more testable, and the packaging complexity that was there is basically gone. Okay, so what is Tommy? Uh, the name comes from Tomcat plus Java EE equals Tommy, so ha ha. We pronounce it Tommy as the name, like the Who album or the Who song, I should say. So it's not Tom EE, -E, it's Tommy. And then uh, it's Java EE6 Web Pro certified, as I mentioned, built from all Apache components. Um, and like I say, it's like, it's what we've been building ourselves for years. So literally when we make Tommy, we take a Tomcat zip file and we extract it and then we add jars to it, we zip it back up again. So there really isn't much going on there in terms of mucking with Tomcat. And we do that absolutely on purpose. Um, so here's a, a very high kind of bulleted thing. Uh, we have Tomcat with JSP and JSF, and we continue on Tommy by adding JTA, JPA, and basically the web profile requirements. Then we have Tommy JaxRS, which takes the web profile and adds JaxRS. JaxRS did not make it into the web profile in Java E6. It is in the web profile in Java E7. And then 
Uh, on top of that, we have Tommy Plus, which is basically the closest we get to a full EE server stack, adding Jack's WS, JMS, and the connector architecture. And this is EE6. This is EE6. Yep. EE7, uh, basically, this is the web profile in EE7. We only really added one. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so this, this would look a little bit different for E7. We'd have WebSockets up there in the Tomcat column. Um, and what else? Anything just? How full would your server get, say, you just mentioned on the Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention like EL on there. Yeah. So we have three design principles that guide everything we do. Uh, and if someone proposes a, some feature or some functionality or something that goes outside these three, it's an instant no. So first one is be simple, and this is in no particular order. The first one is be simple. The world does not need another complicated Java EE server. Um, what we all love about Tomcat is that it's simple, and so we want to keep things simple. Uh, another one is, of course, be Tomcat. So if we've done something to ruin Tomcat, make your app that deployed on Tomcat not deploy on Tommy, that's not good. We want Tommy to work with all the stuff that, that works with Tomcat. That's the idea. That's the whole thesis of the project. Uh, we religiously stick to the Tomcat life cycle, and we just basically fill it out. And, uh, and so Tommy works with the Eclipse tools for Tomcat, works with uh, Basically, anything that supports Tomcat supports Tommy out of the box, no modifications. Uh, and then the be certified. So we want to offer all this stuff and still be certified. And what that means is that if you've got a bunch of applications running on like WebLogic or something like that, or WebSphere or whatever, and you want to move them on to Tomcat, you no longer need to rewrite those things to get them onto Tomcat. You can just move them straight over right there without having to change them. And that's a very significant thing. And that only is possible because we actually are certified. And uh, so here are the components that we put into Tommy. So it's open WebBeans, open JPA, open EJB, my faces, Apache Bean Validation, CXF, and ActiveMQ. Uh, but uh, we also have another flavor coming out because of the recent announcement that Glassfish is going to be discontinued effectively, the commercial support. Uh, so we will I'll also allow you to, to uh, use Eclipse Link or Mohara as alternate implementations for JSF and JPA specifically. Um, so here's the bigger question, and then we're trying, let's scoot on to like actually showing some code, because that's the more interesting thing. But this is the one I find that a lot of people don't really know. And uh, so what is the difference, what does is, what is Java EE certified mean? Well, it means that Oracle, previously Sun, has given you this really huge suite of tests that you have to run and you have to pass in order to say you're done. And you can't even be one test shy of passing before you can say you're done. You have to pass 100% of those tests, not give or take a couple, 100%. There are tens of thousands of these tests and they take a very long time to run. Uh, if you run it linearly, it'll be about a week before it finishes. And so it is not a small thing. Uh, we put a lot of work into passing this stuff. Uh, and when I say that, it took, it took us about like 10 months, uh, which is actually really fast. On Geronimo, it would take us about a year and a half on average, just because it was a bigger, more complicated server. Uh, yeah, so when it, when it says that we passed tens of thousands of tests in you know, and then they take a week. You imagine like the server is really huge. Tommy web profiles 27 megabytes and download size are 28. And the JAXRS version is like 40 or 33. And then the full profile or our closest to full profile version is about 45 megabytes in download size. So we don't really increase things very much. You pick the size you want and we pass the entire EETCK without increasing the default JVM memory setting. So it's very, very light. I mean, the amount of memory that this takes is extremely small. So we actually routinely do all of our TCK testing in Amazon EC2. 
will fire up like 100 spot T1, you know, T1 micro spot instances, which have like, say, 6, 613 megabytes of memory each. We actually end up taking only a fraction of that, and then we just fire off all the tests, all in parallel, churn through them in about an hour and a half, which is how we're able to function as an open source project uh, without a major Goliath behind us doing all this stuff because we're just approaching all these problems in a very different way than uh, you would normally find. So what it allows us to do is we're basically in the same, we put Tomcat in the same league as Glassfish, WebLogic, WebSphere. So it's, you have your cake and eat it too. That's the whole idea. Have your cake and eat it too. You can make everybody happy if they say, oh, you got to use, you know, a web sphere because it's these certain things. Well, yeah, now Tomcat can do that too. So what's the next argument? That you want it to be more expensive? <laughs> All right, so let me just show you some, some code because that's the more significant thing. Um, let me go to the temperature. I'm, gonna, I'm going to, uh, oops. Going to extract uh, Eclipse and set up uh, Tommy and Eclipse from scratch here. I always find that uh, when you see it uh, like a demo and uh, everything is just magically set up in advance, it's kind of disappointing because you don't actually know what things they had to do before they showed up in the room to get all that awesome stuff that you just saw to work. And so we're just going to do everything from the scratch, from scratch here. So I'm gonna first going to boot up Eclipse. I just extracted it. While all that's booting, because Eclipse takes a while, I'm going to extract Tommy from zip. Where's the plus one six? There it is. We, we changed our package uh, binary file format. All right, so I'm extracting the heaviest version of Tommy. I don't think it's, I think it's cheating to show you just the lightest stuff and then like ignore the fact that we have bigger distributions. So I'm going to show you the heaviest one and you can just assume that everything is going to be a little bit lighter than the one that I'm showing you. So uh, we're going to create a new workspace in our temp directory. And if you notice, here's the bin directory. There's all our startup and all the basic <coughs> usual suspects of Tomcat startup scripts. Like I say, we don't delete anything. We extract, we add, we zip. We do not delete. <laughs> Okay, so first thing you do is you create a new dynamic web project. Do not click enterprise application project. That's the old crappy stuff. <laughs> Use web project like you always do with Tomcat. Okay, and we're gonna call it Apache Con. That's our project name. We say new runtime. Tomcat 7, say next, and uh, we'll give it a little tag here, call it Tommy, just so we can know it's the Java EE version of, of Tom, Tom, Tomcat. Then we just browse to our temp directory, where we extracted Tommy, and we just click on it like we would Tomcat, and we say open. We say finish. We accept all the defaults. We're having your servlet 3.0 app, all that kind of stuff. And then we just say finish. That's basically it. Now we can get to coding. So we have a little project. And this is big enough. I want to make sure I'll increase the uh, font if I can when the code comes. So. We'll create ourselves a new servlet. Let's say org ApacheCon. Hello servlet and finish. Okay, and of course Eclipse loves to generate the boilerplate Javadoc, which the world is so happy to have. It's very descriptive. The method you're looking at is called do get. 
it returns void. OK. And I'm just going to do some uh, basic hello world style uh, what's that, content type. Text HTML. Yeah, that's kind of small. Didn't even know how to increase the font in Eclipse because I can't remember. Yeah. Oh, you have to go under settings? You can't like magically do a key command? Yeah, all right. I'll just. Append. All right, and then we'll just say an slightly invalid HTML. Oh, come on. There we go. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> OK. And then basically, you do the same thing that you would do with Tomcat. You, and I should ask the question, who uses Eclipse? Wow, that's not nearly as many as it normally is. OK, IntelliJ? All right, so in NetBeans? I guess VI Emacs? <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK. So we just select the one that we had already set up, and we, we click the Always Use This Server box. We say Finish, and then it will boot and run uh, our little Hello Servlet app. Boom. So there it was. It was fairly quick. I mean, we didn't notice the, oh my gosh, this is now taking several minutes because we put the words EE -E on it. I think you get like five minutes each E on a boot up, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's fairly light. Now, we haven't done anything that you can't normally do in Tomcat, so let's start going off the, uh, off the rails a little bit. So we're going to create uh, a bean here. We're going to say Java X EJB. Oh, my gosh. Singleton. We're going to give it a local view. And we're going to make a public method here called hello, returns, hello EJB. OK. Now to get this referenced in our servlet, we just make a private field, type hello bean, and we annotate it with javax EJB EJB. We press save, or I won't do that yet because then it will reload. I just want to update our, we'll actually uh, bother to uh, update our output a little bit. OK, and we press save. And then Eclipse should notice that it changed and redeploy. There, then it's done. And now we can go back to our uh, output here, refresh. And now we just added an EJB to our application. And we didn't have to add any libraries. We didn't, the better thing is we didn't have to like spend f forever reading someone's blog post from 2011 that hasn't been updated for like five years or whatever and only contains half the information. There's like a XKCYD. Uh, a, you know, cartoon, it's like, you know, some guy reading the internet and he's like screaming at his computer like, you know, TJ47, what did you learn? You know, like, you always see someone's like, you know, question on, the mail, on some mailing list and it's not answered and that's your question and you're like, yeah. Yeah, so none of that. That's the most, ins you know, one of the. Oh, yeah, that, exactly, <laughs> exactly. You it out. It's like, what do you mean, never mind? Yeah, I can't stand that.
So that's just, you know, uh, EJB stuff. And I forgot to mention it took a half an hour to restart that app. We just didn't notice. Okay, so let's do uh, some web service stuff. So we'll add uh, web, you know, at web service on it. Press save, and this app should eventually redeploy when Eclipse notices. There it goes. And maybe you can't see it because it's just in the bottom, but in our log output, there is a line that includes the actual web service address. So we'll copy and paste that into our browser here. And then we'll say WSDL. And now we have full WSDL. This is basically now CXF integrated uh, on top of EJB, on top of Tomcat. And uh, now we, we got full WSDL for our Hello World component. And we haven't had, again, again, we have not had to go read anybody's blog posts and do anything. It's all there out of the box uh, like you would normally expect. So it's all the awesome parts about having the fully featured EE server, but none of the draggy parts of having it be slow and kill your productivity and all that kind of stuff. Um, interesting note is we religiously stick to the Tomcat way of doing things. So the WS security, for example, we've already integrated out of the box on top of Tomcat Realm. So, so if you have a custom Realm implementation, like using the JWC Realm or whatever, WS security that the CXF provides is integrated on top of that Tomcat Realm. So you know, if you have users in your Realm, you can now use WS security right out of the box. Um, OK, so we just saw. Uh, a bunch of things. There's, again, more in the box that we can show. So we'll do some REST stuff. And we'll call it REST. And we'll make this now a get method. And then we save that. And the server should eclipse again. There's that timer. Uh, don't worry about the stack trace. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Move along. That is oh, a bad logging problem. <laughs> yeah, and then so the default uh, return value for a RESTful service is text plane by default. So we executed this via a browser and we got text plane because that's our, our, our RESTful endpoint. And so basically, we've done, uh, you know, JAX WS, JAX RS, uh, some EJB, there's, you know, transactions if we want them there. And uh, we have two classes and no third party libraries in our web app and zero time spent reading other people's inadequate blog posts. Uh, giving us plenty of time to write our own inadequate blog posts on how awesome this is, which you should do. And don't forget to abandon them after like a few months because you've moved on to, to, to something else because that's the way of the world. Okay, so there's, that's, that's, that's pretty cool right there. There's a lot more in the box, but, but uh, uh, let's, let's see some, some sort of, you know, that, that's all standard stuff. And uh, it's, it's, it's cool. Uh, but a lot of things that what Tommy is about is not necessarily just doing the same thing that everybody's doing, but trying to add new stuff. I and mean, we're kind of a, you know, uh, always like ADD going around, oh, what if we could do this? What if we could do that? What if we could do this other thing? And so one of the things that we added uh, is this kind of cool concept. 2014 Apache Con, all right. Is, so who, who's heard of the uh, connector architecture? All right, two people in the room. One of them does it for a living. That's pretty much indicative. Maybe you do it for a living as well? No? Okay. So who's heard of message-driven beans? Okay. Basically, it's JMS 
uh, you know, type of a thing. Uh, so the connect architecture has been this thing, and MDBs basically have been this thing in Java E for a long time that allow you to consume, you know, JMS messages. And uh, you know, it was originally introduced in like EJB. Uh, let, me re let me actually build. Yeah. Yeah, I shifted over to uh, Maven, don't let me down. Got to grab all those jars that I missed. So uh, in EJB 2.0, we added MDBs and basically allow you to consume JMS messages, right? And uh, you could do, it's all transactional, so when you consume the message, if you fail, you call rollback, the message goes right back on the queue, and you get to uh, uh, redo it. Um, and so then in EJB 2.1, we actually abstracted MDBs from JMS so that MDBs could actually be driven by anything. But we just really didn't tell the world. And so the, we went on thinking MDBs were only for JMS when, in fact, you could have shoved any communication of your own desire into that server and uh, let's try that one instead. And uh, that looks a little bit better, maybe, except these shouldn't show up. Oh, come on. Oh, there we go. Yay. Um, all right. And so uh, we made it so you could actually put anything in, you know, and make any kind of connector to, to get any protocol into the server. So basically receive messages from anywhere on any kind of implementation of protocol that you wanted to make. Uh, the world never really capitalized on that because the whole spec was really, really clunky. Uh, we made some changes in Tommy and we are lucky enough to get them into EE7. So I'm going to show you just a little bit of a kind of a neat, neat thing. So so here is what a messenger and bean looks like now. Uh, we have just at messenger and bean on the top, and then in our connector, we made up. This, this is a connector that's a telnet connector. And uh, it's a little sample connector that I hacked up to prove two things. One, these don't have to be asynchronous. They can be synchronous. Uh, and then two, it doesn't have to be JMS. It can be actually, literally anything. And so, I sort of hacked up this little telnet connector, and you can make these at command uh, methods. And so you just make any number of methods, and you annotate them with at command. And this deploys into your EE server. And then you can go ahead and actually telnet into the server itself. So I'm going to run this. And this is Archelian, by the way. Uh, I'm building up my war file uh, in code. And it will actually boot the server, push the web app in, and run it, except IntelliJ doesn't like to run it sometimes. There we go. What's that? Oh, my, not looking at my output. There we go. All right. Okay, so we are not logged into a computer like a like a, a Linux machine. We're actually logged into our JVM via the little Telnet uh, connector. So here we have uh, you know a bunch of commands, and let's if I execute. Uh, wow, unfortunately, this is a Java in Telnet shell, so I don't have like clear on it. There we go. I'll move it up. All right, so if I say uh, max memory and I execute it, that tells me how many megabytes of memory I have available in my JVM. Uh, you know, if I say properties, I don't know, if it shows me all the system properties. And again, this is not like using some REST call through a servlet. I'm actually in the VM, and the uh, code that implements this stuff is fairly simple. Here was the properties command. 
right? It, not real difficult. And this one I know how to increase the font to, so I actually use IntelliJ. You can tell. All right. So that's the code that would that actually executed. Extremely small. And basically, and here's the uh, one that did the, the, the memory. Yeah. Yeah. So I got the uh, command name from uh, the method. And uh, then I just execute this, return a string. Basically, we, we took uh, and, and decided to uh, hack up an API modeled after, ja after JAX-RS, effectively, and um, wrap it up into a little connector and chuck that into the server. And what I wanted to impress upon you is not that this is like an awesome feature that Tommy has. These connectors, you can write yourself and deploy them into the server. So if you wanted to write yourself an email consuming connector, if you wanted to write yourself a, a connector that consumes like, you know, uh, uh, you know, byte buffers or whatever, or some fancy protocol of your choosing. It doesn't always have to be HTTP. It can be more than HTTP. Than HTTP. Uh, there are a lot of other protocols that existed, you know, and uh, to write a connector is actually very simple. You take a class that implements resource adapter, and there are fundamentally four methods that you have to focus on. Start and stop, which are very adequately named. These are called when the server boots and when the server shuts down. And then these, which are less uh, obviously named. Endpoint, act, let me maximize this. Not a breakpoint. Come on. OK. Endpoint activation, which is effectively deploy, and deactivation, which is undeploy. And the magic of it is really that you get this thing called the message endpoint factory, which is like a factory for creating references to the bean. And so you say message endpoint factory, create endpoint. And what you get back is something that implements the interface message endpoint but also implements all the methods of the bean. So you can basically, via reflection, invoke any th method you want, passing in any arguments, so sky's the limit on what you can do. So in a connector, you can write, you can start threads, you can open sockets, you can do basically all the things that they tell you you're not supposed to do, as long as you do them in a connector and they're in de in deployed in the server, you can extend your server standardly to do basically anything you could possibly think of. It's, it's incredibly extensible. And the cool thing is this runs in any EE server. So if you wanted to run it in JBoss, if you wanted to run it in WebSphere, WebLogic, it's fine. It will run in all those servers. And anybody who supports uh, an EE server, like in the cloud, you could deploy this connector into that server, into the cloud. And now you could have like Telnet into the cloud or SSH probably be smarter. Uh, there's is, there is some SSH code out there. Uh, another one that would be fun to do would be like a chat listener, you know, like so you could like actually have a, you know, a bot on an IRC channel or, you know, uh, you know, Google chat or something like that. And you could actually talk to your server via chat, maybe tell it to run some commands and, uh, you know, clean some stuff up or tell you what the memory is or whatever. I mean, you, sky's the limit. It's up to you. All right. So let me, this, uh, that particular code is in GitHub. If you wanted to see that code, it's, there we go. There's the URL if you want it. Okay. And let's see how glutton for punishment am if I can. Oop, I didn't mean to do that. Okay. So I mentioned embeddable containers as being significant because they allow you to basically write 
uh, plain Java code and still use all the functionality that normally has been considered like heavy and part of the server and you know you have to boot up an external process. Here's a small application, has exactly two Java classes in it. One, we have an EJB, boo hiss, sure, but it's just an annotation, okay? And so we have a basic being that does math. And we have a test case. Okay? And this uses that embedded EJB container concept that I mentioned. And so this will just look up the bean via its, you know, some JNDI name, and then uh, it will invoke several tests on it. You know, can we do some addition? Can we do some subtraction? Can we do multiplication? Real fundamental, real, real rudimentary stuff. All right. There we go. Two seconds to run that. So, uh, as I've said, specifications aren't heavy or light. The way you implement them is heavy or light. And just because the only choices we had for the majority of the early years of Java EE were big, heavy servers that didn't have any, any interest in making something light and simple for you to use, does not mean that the technology is bad. It means they're bad. Uh, and now they're less bad because they also have to implement an, an embedded lightweight EJB container because we, we won the battle of getting that into the spec. So no, they have to, had to do it too. Uh, theirs aren't quite as fast, but, uh, but you know, they have to do it. So that's cool. Uh, so yeah, the coolest thing about this is that it's plain Java. We, we, we took plain Java and we put it back into Java EE. Java, like, you don't even need, just drop the EE. Like, just call it Java, because it really doesn't matter anymore. It's only philosophical at this point. You know, if we want to put a breakpoint here and do some plain old debugging, and we could do that. We'll run it with, in debug mode. Server boots up, we run, boom, there's our breakpoint. So we're gonna, we're, it's a, if you maybe you can see in the bottom, it wants, you know, we can see our actual, our, our variables in memory, you know what I mean? We're back to plain Java SE coding, even though we're using EE. It's really, like I say, they're just two letters at this moment. And, uh, you know, it's, this is the way we wanna see everything continue in, in EE. We want 100% of what's there in the EE spec to be all usable in a plain Java SE environment. And in fact, I'm a really big fan of embedded, embeddable containers, not just because we were like one of the first ones out there. We did it for a reason, because if you only have like say one app and you're deploying it in the server, well, why not just invert that relationship? Why not just put the server in the app? If you only have one app and you're not doing this multi-class loader uh, sharing type of a thing, you know, just tuck everything in one plain single class loader take back public static void main, do whatever you want to do, and then boot the server up. And there's a lot of merit to that. You know, and Tomcat has a lot of embeddability stuff that it's added over the last, say, three, four years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's smart. You know, and, and when you have, uh, you know, say you're in a cloud environment, and you have just the one app and the one server, uh, it's very nice to be able to control the public static void main because you can do a lot of provisioning and a lot of bootstrap and a lot of plain Java coding. And uh, you don't necessarily need the, the separated class loaders anymore uh, because today's version of scaling is, you know, a thousand uh, VMs, a thousand virtual machines running in like EC2 on spot instances or, or something like that. It's not the traditional one big fat piece of hardware with you know, s you know, 70 gigs of memory associated. Certainly you might do that, but, uh, but a lot of small is really the, the more modern definition of scalable these days. And in, in that scenario, it's, it's nice to have just a plain JVM uh, to be working with. All right. 
So we're just about out of time. Uh, so this is the, the way I would normally describe when you take and you throw all this stuff in your war file, this is what you end up with. To do the example that I showed, you could do it with enough reading enough blog posts, and that's not you, but you would still end up with a separate JAXRS class to do the hello, and you would end up with a separate JAXWS class to do the hello because one's got to be deployed, deployed to this library, the other one's got to be deployed to that library, and if you wanted to do things like the dependency injection that I mentioned, you know, you wouldn't be able to do that unless you added yet another library to do that kind of wiring. Uh, this is what integration really should look like. I showed one class that basically used everything, and that's what integration looks like. You know, all that stuff is tied on one class. We don't have to make five different classes because we're using five different APIs. We can have one class that uses all five APIs. That's a significantly different perspective than when you just drop stuff into Tomcat. That part is very hard. That's, that code takes a lot of time to get right. It's not heaps and mountains of code. It's, it's hours, days, and weeks, and months getting the right three, four lines with the right little adapter class to hook up to these internal guts of that library and that li you know, guts of that library. We do all sorts of interesting things to try and make that story uh, more tightly integrated. So for example, when you put CXF into Tomcat, CXF will scan all of your web apps, every class file and every jar. Yep, I see the time. Uh, scan every class and every jar looking for at web service and at path. And Tomcat will, of course, scan every class file and every jar looking for at web servlet and at web filter and so on. And you add JPA provider in there, it's going to scan every class file and every jar looking for at entity. Same if you add my faces in there, it's going to do the same thing for app management. Basically, the more things you pile in, the more you, all these libraries have to do all this stuff independently, because that's kind of the way we write APAs now. You magically annotate them, and they show up. Well, that magic costs a lot. We actually have to read your bytecode and figure it out. And so one of the things we do is we just scan everything once, and we Say, here's your classes, here's your classes, here's your classes, and we cut that scan from, if you have, say, five, five major APIs in, bundled in there, instead of scanning five times, you're scanning once. And there's a second, second significant difference. We don't have all those libraries in the web app anymore. They're in the server. So that one scan is going to be five times as fast because we're scanning five times fewer major libraries, like Open JPA is like two megabytes. You know, scanning that is not exactly fast. Uh, and you know, my face is another megabyte in, or so. And you just start adding these things, and pretty soon you end up with a WAR file that's like 30 megs, and you haven't written any code yet. You've just taken all the libraries that you normally use, and you chucked them into the next WAR file to write your new app, and you have got no code of your own, and you've already got like a huge WAR file. Everything I've showed you required zero third-party libraries, all out of the box. Okay, so what we would like to say is spend your time writing applications, not writing app servers. That's really the thesis. Um, so I did all that stuff. We have a lot of things that support Tommy, uh, and the joke here is that uh, they already supported it. We just had to tell them they supported it because it's Tomcat, right? It works with all the Tomcat tools. So I saw, I saw Yevgeny, who was the CEO of Zero Turnaround, they do the JRebel product at like a conference maybe two years ago, and I said, you support Tomcat, right? Of course, it's like 70% of the market. How we could not support Tomcat? Exactly. Uh, just try your stuff on Tommy and see if it works. Two weeks later, they announced a new release that they had added Tommy support. It's like, cool. <laughs> you know, basically they updated the documentation and did a release. <laughs> And that's basically been the mode that we're going on with everybody who supports Tomcat tools. We're, we're tapping them on the shoulder saying, hey, try your stuff on Tommy, because guess what? You already support it. It's Tomcat. And uh, so we've had a lot of adoption in all these tools because there hasn't been any work that they really had to do. Uh, we announced uh, ourselves a, a company to support Tommy, and that's basically to pay people to work on it and support people who use it. And so there's the company plug. Uh, I have cards in the front, so if, if you want some great services, 
uh, we'll hook you up. Uh, but yes, things are not the same as we left them in 2006. They're significantly different. And um, I can take my own stitches out, but does it mean I should? You know, all the stuff is there integrated, and if you download it and use it, you're up and running immediately. So uh, we have maybe a couple seconds for questions before Mark has to do his talk. Any questions? Yeah. Um, scenario, uh, somebody emails the Tomcat mailing list, there's this horrible bug, such and such isn't working, fantastic Mark over here fixes it in mm -hmm. two minutes. When does Tommy E have that fix? I mean, is it your very next release, or are you just pulling straight from the Tomcat source, or what? Uh, we don't do source, we do zip, okay. and so as soon as they release it, we're putting that in our trunk, and then okay. we release that basically as the next release. All right, thank you. So every Tommy release has the, always the most current Tomcat release. Something is a question for you, but you mentioned uh, Glassfish is going away, and so it, the open source version will stick around, but there'll be no more commercial support for it. Okay, so you're supporting Mohara, and uh, what does that mean? Does that mean uh, you've got it means branch, or is Mohara becoming? Uh, no, it means it means or? it means uh, we uh, integrated it in, and so we're in the next Tommy release. There will be this new flavor of Tommy, a fourth one called Plume which is basically uh, Eclipse Link and Mohara. And uh, we run it through the EETCK to make sure all the tests pass for JSF and JPA and all that stuff so that it's equally functional as all the other stuff that we give out. So basically, it will be a certified version of Tommy with Mohara instead of my faces as the JSF implementation and Eclipse Link instead of uh, OpenJPA as the JP implementation. Now, JPA is standardly pluggable. You can take any cop, any version of Tommy, yank out the JPA provider, and add in Eclipse Link or Hibernate. No, nothing needs to happen inside the server because there's a standard API for plugging in JPA. We had to do a little bit of integration work for Mohara, and that's that's where that comment comes from. So I guess we're out of time, but thank you very much for that talk. It was really great. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much.